Hey, welcome to episode 84 of Tangible Takeaways. I'm Jackson, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about how my parents canceled plans to let me hang out with other leaders. And my name's Debbie, and I am going to be talking about how we should not be scared of the world's influence on our kids and really understand the power that we have in discipling them. And I'm Jody, and I'm going to talk about why inviting people into the influence of your kids is also good for you as a parent. All that and more on this episode of Tangible Takeaways. Hey, welcome to episode 84 of Tangible Takeaways. Debbie and Jody, thanks guys for being here. Good Glad to be here. Yeah. Glad to Appreciate be here. it. Uh, man, you guys have been making the rounds. This has been a big week for you. Stage, yeah. now Tangible Takeaways. Yeah. This know. is the highlight though. Oh, good. Good. This is the yeah. They yeah, didn't this, let us yeah. sit on a couch on yes. stage. So. No, that's true. Living room feels appropriate for yeah. the family series. Yeah, for you sure. know, yes. feels like the right spot. Yeah. Um, man, it was a it was a great weekend. I think to tie in such a rich concept that's so true to the way that we run kids and students ministries here at HDC and wanting to be good partners with parents, um, but obviously touches on some real like passion points for you guys. Yeah. When you hear, you know, we're doing a family series and we're going to get to talk about some of this and you guys are going to get to be involved in communicating that to our families. Like just kind of what are some of the things that kind of get you excited and are you're passionate about to see in the lives of families here at HDC? Yeah, I mean, I think for us, like, and I, I'll speak for me, maybe not for us, but like we we speak to families so often and are with parents, with families, navigating all kinds of things. But there's a huge, huge, there's a large section of, I would say, our families that really don't ever engage consistently with our programs. Mm. And so we, I always feel a little bit like short-armed a little bit in that partnership. And again, not not that, like, if you're going to tell me you're going to give me an hour, worship together. Don't, don't send your kid to us and then not worship together, right? But we do seek to partner so much like that's so much our heart is to be that ally and to come alongside and walk through things and really help help parents and families navigate all the crazy that comes but you can kind of only do that to the extent you're allowed mm. and i know like in student ministry and so many times you i end up in a in a conversation or in a counseling appointment with a 10th grader parents are kind of stuck they don't know what to do to get this 10th grade kid dealing with whatever and it started way back, maybe even before they got into student ministry even, but we just didn't know, right? And yeah. so now you're on the back end trying to put the pieces back together. So I think for us to really address that proactively and have an opportunity to, to even share like, hey, here's what's available. Hmm. Like here are all the things that we're trying to do to help. And even this weekend, like, man, just given a blip of, of those things, to me, that gets that's exciting because I, I think some parents just may not be aware of all that we have and all that's going on in the in our heart, and that's what you hope comes across. It's not like, hey, we need more kids. That's really not it. Yeah, it's just this is our heart for you, and we're in this with you, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I um I get real excited about. We have a lot of families that join our church that this is their first mm -hmm. church home, or maybe they didn't grow up consistently you know hmm. in kids ministry themselves and so um yes it is a discipleship of your kids is a responsibility but it's also a huge privilege hmm. and so i um you know love getting to talk to parents about just the power that they have within their homes and just hmm. you know god's design the way that he designed the family that we do get to spend time doing all these things together and that those you know those primary primary relationships have the most influence and the power that's in that um, is just exciting to me, you know, yeah. um, that just the difference that having family dinners can make and a few questions that, you know, help you better connect with your kids or, you know, having time where you're reading your Bible in front of your kids, just the power that that has in showing them spiritual rhythms, you know, starting yeah. your day right. And mm. so I just think, you know, the family is really set up. Um, we get really scared about the influence the world has mm. uh, and we will put so much of our focus on the world's gonna you know we don't want our kids to do this the world's gonna have this influence and yes you know you do need to be cautious of influences and intentional about influences in your kid's life 
but you also just need to really, you know, um, hold that responsibility and privilege that like I have so much influence, mm. you know, in the day to day of, yeah. of what my kids are seeing and learning and, you know, what I'm modeling for them. So that's, you know, exciting for me. Yeah, yeah that's so true. I mean, I love that. Even in even in teens, when you talk mm-hmm. to them in a moment of honesty, they will still tell you that the greatest influence in their life is their parents. Yeah. yeah. But it's hard to believe that sometimes as a parent because our culture tells you that's not the case. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah, to be able to do that, that's pretty special. Yeah. It it is so interesting how we really crave and respond to big purpose in our life. And there is, man, few purposes so big as discipling your kids. And while that does on some fronts, maybe, especially if you're hearing it for the first time, feel daunting. Yeah. But there's that other side where I think it it brings the best out of you as a parent of like, man, I, I've got to be more intentional. I've got to lean in. I've got to be better in these areas because this is this is the influence, the yeah, level at which I get to influence my kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, instead of being, you know, I, I agree we have to be intentional about the influences that are led into our kids' lives. But I also agree with you, Debbie. I think we give way too much power to those mm-hmm. things, too. And we we neglect the fact or we, we, we refuse to see the fact that there is so much power that parents have in the home yeah. that it's it's underrated, the power that parents get to have to influence their kids. They're not just like helpless to whatever the world is going to do to their kids. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you have a significant amount of power in shaping yeah. your kids. And they are. Yeah. Like that's the thing. Like even as, even as you're talking, I'm thinking like you are discipling your kid for good or for right. worse, yeah. right? Yeah. And how many times as an adult do you go, oh my gosh, I sound just like my parent, my mm-hmm. whoever, right? And so you're, I remember, man, starting to teach our kids to drive. I'm like, why are you driving so crazy, you know? And like, your spouse is like, they drive just like you, you know? Yeah. Like, they learned it from you. Or or even in the inverse, when you're so bad at something, yeah. where your kids almost overcorrect, and they yep. become like protective against that thing, because yeah. it's like, totally. well, my, my dad was super bad at X, so I was never going to let anybody else do that to me again, yep. or whatever, yep. you know? I mean, for me, that was, you know, even just in how I'm approaching marriage and family, like, yeah, there's some mistakes that I saw made that I don't want to repeat. Yeah. Um, you know, but I also think like little things, you you see kids pulling for the same sports teams as their parents and their yeah. dads. They're super passionate about that. Yeah, we've modeled that for them all these years. And so we're not saying you're not discipling your kids. We're saying you are, but be mindful and intentional about yeah. what yeah. you're discipling yeah. and being and being thoughtful about how you're using that time. It's a big deal. But yeah. it's also like in a weird way, I find it encouraging for yeah. parents who go, oh, I could never disciple my kid. No, you are. Look yeah. at all the other ways you're discipling your kid for good or bad. Like, if you can do it in all those other things, mm-hmm. then you can certainly do it here, right? If you can teach your kid to be an Angels fan, <laughs> a team that never wins, yeah. you can teach them to love That's Jesus. That's a feat in itself. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You can teach them to love Said Jesus. Said the Tennessee fan. Yeah. You hey, we're that. winning right now, yeah. baby. <laughs> yeah, right? that's, but I, but I, and I think, that's so true, right? If, yeah. you, if your interests are divided... You can't look at your kids and say, oh, their interests are divided. That's so weird. Like, that yeah. totally checks out. If I'm not consistent in my pursuit of Jesus, why would I expect my kids to be? Yeah. It, Yet yeah. that seems to be a disconnect for a ton of parents. Because, I mean, we hear all the time in ministry, oh, I'm not really back at church for me. I'm here for my kids. Yeah. And it's like, well, I don't know what kind of impact you think this is going to have in your kid's life if it's not having an impact in yours. There are those like rare stories that you see from time to time where a kid just wants it and is after it. That's super rare if they don't see that in their parents in some yeah. level. But sometimes kids disciple up. Yeah. They do. Right? I mean, yeah. like, you know, we get we take prayer requests every week from students in our midweek programs. And, and uh, it's amazing how many of those prayer requests are students praying for their parents. Hmm. Right, they, and it's maybe even to your man. I see this in me, and I wish this to be true in my parents. Yeah, and sometimes it's not always like they're not a believer. It's just like I just wish they were more intentional. I just mm. wish they loved God more, or you know that they wouldn't feel so guilty over it. Like it's the weight that we carry as parents. As much as we want to hide that from our kids, 
our kids are going to see that at times. And so just be honest. Yeah. Like just have the conversations. And as your kids get older, those conversations can be more and more real and transparent. Yeah. I have loved the, there's been some real practical helps in this series. Mm. Because I do think, you know, the idea it sounds so big of like, yeah. how do I even, like, where do I start? Mm-hmm. You know, we only had 15 minutes or so. I think they timed us at 15 <laughs> minutes. But um, I got to make a plug for the parenting conference because I do think, you know, ideas are great in discussing ideas are great but i think for our parenting conference we have some good breakouts and some practical hows you know and jody said this weekend you know something is better than nothing and so even if you can readjust your schedule to make family dinners a priority and just um, make a few tweaks and some habits those little tweaks will really go a long way with moving your family in the right direction and um, I spoke to, you know, this weekend that my, you know, my parents were first generation Christians and there were even seasons that my mom was on her own, um, where my dad, you know, was in and out a bit and that we really leaned into the church mm. and those influences. I, even in all that chaos of my mom, you know, trying to figure this out, my mom was super faithful in her walk with the Lord and in her, um, you know, we didn't do a ton of, she always had us in church, was bringing us to church. We didn't do a ton of like, oh, here's the handouts that are coming home in those discussions. Our life was pretty chaotic. Um, But I watched her model a strong faith whenever we were faced with challenges. Mm. So for me as a kid, that spoke volumes. And so now I feel like she has set me up in a place that I can build on that with my kids, right? So whatever we get within our families, you know, we can take it to the next level with our kids. Yeah. So, um, and I think that's, you know, what all of us want with for our kids is we want them to be a little bit more prepared and understand God's love a little bit more even than we did so that they then can continue to pass that on yeah. for yeah. generations to come. So come to the parenting conference. We're going to have some really practical hows. You know, how do you actually do this? Um, yeah. Like yeah. May 21st. Yep. And if you want to sign up, you can text family to six, four, five, six, seven. That'll lock you in. I'm there. I'm on yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I think, man, how true is that for so many of us that we say, man, if I can't do, um, you know, discipling my kids at this level, then I just won't do it at all. Right. And it's like, no, like just start, start building. You don't mm-hmm. start at this level. You start at this level right. and you begin building on top of whatever that small foundation is that you start on. And so I think that's such great advice. Like pick up one thing from this series, really start honing that, practicing it in your family, and then begin to build upon it. Yeah. Like and that's God huge. is so faithful to show up. You know, there's been times where it's like, okay, he's asking me to make this sacrifice or this tweak, and it seems like it's going to be really hard to do. Yeah. And then you see the fruit of that sacrifice, yeah. you know, or that fruit, the fruit of that, you know, obedience. Um, and he is just so faithful to, you know, to do that in our, in our families. Yeah. And I've, uh, you know, I love this specific topic of incorporating influencers into the lives of your kids. This is, I mean, it was not a, um, it's not a, a show or, um, something that's untrue of how my parents parented. It right. was very intentional, very obvious and like not something that I was even unaware of as a kid. It was like, no, we want other people in your life right. because even when I was little and I had a really high respect for my parents, it was like, cause one day you're not going to care about what we think and you're going to care more about what other people think. And I was like, that'll never be true. And then it was totally true. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like they've, they were building towards that end for a long time yeah. in my childhood. Mm-hmm. So I had a plethora of voices pouring into my life. Um, how would you say you guys have pursued that as parents? You know, we got to see you guys are at kind of two different stages of parenting. Yeah. How have you been pursuing that as parents in the lives of even your own kids? Well, we've never lived near family uh, for the most part. I mean, yeah. when our kids were very small, we were near my wife's family. But even then, we were an hour or so away. And then, you know, when our oldest was in kindergarten, we moved about six hours from family. So. When Grandparents Day came at school, we had no grandparents around, right? We didn't have that or those types of yeah. things. And I remember that season, even just us feeling like, almost like grieved, like, gosh, man, we show up with all these kids. They have all these grandparents around, and sometimes you're like, you feel guilty because they're not here. So we just, but we always had other 
people in the church for us who were kind of those pseudo grandparents. So I can remember um, like our, one of our girls in preschool grandparents day rolls around and we don't have grandparents around. And so uh, Miss Cindy, who was actually our worship pastor's wife, she came and she was like honoring a grandparent for that, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, being in student ministry, we always had small group leaders around. I mean, our kids have only known life in student ministry. And so all of those volunteers just kind of pulled them in and adopted them in. And, but putting them around people and, and bringing our kids along, like for us, has always been a huge piece. Our kids have always tagged along and, and been a part of that. And, and, and for us, it meant, yeah, seeking out maybe some of those things so that our kid wasn't sitting there hmm. being the kid without a grandparent. No, mm-hmm. like, yeah. yeah, Miss Cindy can come. You love, we hang out with them. And, you know, they were, they were at that time probably not like grandparent age necessarily, but older than us and a little bit further down the line. And those were special moments for our kids. And I think equally true for, in, in Cindy's case, for her, you yeah. know, um, you got the picture there, you know, with whatever in the foam frame that's been drawn and colored on yeah. or whatever. But I think, I think of moments like that for us, especially yeah. when our kids were really small, as our kids have gotten older, maybe it was a Sunday school teacher in some context or in student ministry was a small group leader, um, teachers or band directors that, that were believers or that we knew. Um, God's just been faithful to put people in our path. But a lot of times as parents, it was us seeking some of that out for yeah. our kids, recognizing that we were going to need other people around us yeah. to, to be able to speak into the lives of our, our kiddos. And for us, you know, my um, my mom lived out of state when I first mm. uh, when I first became a mom. She just recently moved back, and so we didn't really have you know we have my in laws around, and they were always really intentional. I've been a working mom since my I mean always been a working mom yeah. since my kids were born, four kids, and um, so I really had to rely on um, you know just extra help mm. outside of what I could give. Um, and so I yeah, had, you're, you're kind of forced into it. I'm forced it. into yeah. it. Yeah. But you know, it was, so my, you know, my in-laws would watch the kids every once in a while or they were weekly with my first one. And, um, they were so intentional about the time they spent with her. And I remember, um, early on just feeling so thankful because I saw things in her that they were getting, that she was getting from their investment and mm. their love and the things that, you know, my mother-in-law would teach her like painting and, you know, different things. So, um, so it happened naturally for me when my kids were little and then, you know, my father-in-law got sick and wasn't available, you know, put it, put a lot of pressure on them and one of my friends Stacy stepped up and she would watch um, my daughter for me uh, so I could come to work a couple days a week mm-hmm. like just I want to do this for you and was so intentional with her and so that was like the first time I got to that I really experienced and saw the value not just oh this is a help to me so I can go to work but this is a person who loves the Lord who is investing mm-hmm. in my in my kid and now as my kids have gotten older like you'll recognize who your kids kind of connect with or who you see you know um one of my really good friends helped my all my kids learn how to swim mm. i could not teach them yeah. to swim i yeah. was a hard time <laughs> and my friend amy was like you know let me I'll, I'll i'll do that for you and did and so um so yeah we have we've had you know my kids are younger and but i have had a few friends that i have sought out like hey could you spend some time investing in you know um in, in my daughter and my son, you know, my two older ones, um, because I do see the value that that brings in them just having other people who they can go to. And they've also gotten that at school. My kids, you know, are in a, in a public school and that there's some scariness that can come with that as a parent, you dropping your kid off at school every day. And God has been so faithful to provide just some really great teachers. And there's mm. one in particular that my daughter would come home always like, well, Mrs. Green says this and Mrs. Green says that. And so um, I have sought her out in situations to say, hey, I would love for you to speak into Addie's life on this. And she really respects you. And um, we're having actually a dinner for my daughter coming up. She's getting ready to move into seventh grade. Um, And I was list, I asked her to kind of list off who are these people that you would want to be a part of this. And she did, you know, she's listed off of these, these women that are in our life who have really um, gone out of their way to invest in her. And so there has been some seeking out and some just kind of seeing 
who are the people that my kids naturally connect with yeah that they enjoy their time with them and their you know and then just asking them are you willing to spend a little bit more time <laughs> yeah. with my kids to invest in them yeah and you know what's an added value to that is so often those people we invite in to have influence in our kids life see things in our kids mm. that maybe we oftentimes yeah. miss yeah, yeah. And it ends yeah. up being in just as much of an encouragement for you as a parent because yeah. they begin to point out things yeah. and encourage you of things that they're watching develop. And, and they, they see your kid in a different context completely. normally yeah. than you get to see mm-hmm. them, right? If it's yeah. their small group leader, you don't generally get to watch how they work in small group and if they're compassionate yeah. with other kids in their group or yeah. how competitive they are at small group or whatever. Yeah. Or if it's school, you don't get to see how diligent they are, you know, in the classroom yeah. or, you know, things like that yeah. where they get to see those unique sides yeah. to your kid in the different context too. It's just easy as a parent to see all the flaws. And not because you're being critical of your kids, because you feel responsible for every mistake your kids make. Yeah. And you see so many of those things, again, that were you. You're like, oh my gosh, why are you doing this too? And so when, when someone is saying, no, listen, I saw this. I see this in your kid. Like, you're doing a great job. Yeah. Like, man, as a parent, you're like, yeah, I need all of that yeah. that I can get. And so it's not just... I think even inviting those influencers into your kids is more than just your kids. It's also for you. Yeah. And that's where I think the church becomes such a beautiful ally, not just in the programming that we offer. Right. In the relationships. In the relation, in the yeah. community. Yeah. yeah. Because those relationships and those influencers often come very natural when you plug into a small group yourself. Yeah. Yep. Right. Or you're serving in a ministry. Or you're serving in a ministry. That yeah. serve team that you're with. That. Um, you know, that small group that you're in, those people become fam- like family to you. Yeah. And there's such a built level of trust in shared values too, yeah. right? Yeah. Because you have, which is so true at school, yeah, I've been it's a crapshoot, th- yeah, right? I've been thankful it's like, that my kids have had, they've had believers for teachers, Christians yeah. every year they've been in, but I, that might not always be the case, you yeah. know? And, um, which so, would be really scary if the only place that your kids were connecting with other influences was at, was at school. school. Yeah. yeah. But knowing that there's that foundation of yeah. the churches yeah. where our primary community is being built, yeah. it's like, well, by and large, I can yeah. pretty much trust the people that are pouring into yeah. yeah. my I, kids I, at I church. I love bringing my kids with me when I come into work on a weekend um, because, you know, even my youngest, my second youngest, she's not my youngest anymore, <laughs> Olivia, she was having such a ball interacting with Jody, and she came home on just like cloud nine after spending one service here interacting just with all these people that were, you know, giving her the att- giving her attention, positive yeah. attention. And yeah. um, and I, I see that on the weekend with some of our volunteers. They bring their kids with them. They serve together. And that, you know, that kid is getting poured into by all these other leaders that are there yeah. to serve for common purpose, you know, and we're celebrating things like birthdays together and milestones and achievements. Um, and yeah, there is that built in family element from them, you know, your kids just being, mm-hmm. being here, at, being with a serve team or being with a small group. I could see the same yeah. effect there. Yeah. So. It strengthens so many things. Like obviously our, our kids are on the upper end of the teenage years and beyond. But like we've had moments where we had, our kids have been in public school, most. We homeschooled them very, very small. And then they've been in public school since then. And there have been years where it wasn't necessarily a believer, but it was seen as a mission, mm-hmm. right? And, and because our identity, if you will, and the foundation was not necessarily so grounded in school or performance or grades or being liked by a teacher, like I remember moments and seasons where our kids were like, we need to pray for my teacher. Hmm. Um, and legitimate, we'd have parent teacher conferences and I would, we would go in and my wife, Sarah and I would be in there. Here we are to talk about our kid with a teacher that we know is not a believer. And the teacher would say, you're a pastor, right? And we'd be like, yeah. And can you pray for me? And we spend the whole time praying instead of talking about. Them. So we get done. I'm like, okay, but how's my kid doing in your class? Yeah. You know, like we really can't. But this isn't about you. you, yeah. know? <laughs> you yeah. know? I like, but I think, and it has nothing to do with being doing a pastor. They just knew we were believers. Yeah. And 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 I've in those seasons, I've been so thankful that there were things outside of that 
community. Yeah. Right? That, that were a, a grounding and positive influence in our kids' life. They weren't completely defined by how they performed in school or on a sports team or in a band, you know, like those things were just kind of extra. And as our kids got older, it really did become outward facing. Mm. Like this is the opportunity we have to be a positive influence in a place that desperately needs it. As yeah. believers, it became missional. Yeah. And then along the way, God's always been faithful to put people around our kids even there to encourage. Um, but, but again, because I think our kids were so surrounded by people in our church context that loved Jesus, yeah, like they were able to kind of withstand a lot of those things when those big blows came. Because they were grounded. Yeah. 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 And I think that's, that's where it so consistently starts is recognizing your limitation as a parent. The fact that you do need these other helps to really ground your kid. I thought, man, Jody, I thought the statistic that you gave was powerful, that when there's seven adults investing into a kid who loved Jesus, like it's almost a hundred percent chance that that kid sticks with the church. That's crazy. That's a very doable thing, right? I was, I was counting in my head and I was looked over at sky. I was like, we could double that number. Like we could totally like easily double that number. And like when you begin looking at that, that comes from a sense first of, I can't, I can't do it on my own. And one of the things that I think was true too consistently for is a, a lot of times when there's that, that volunteer or that extra leader in your kid's life that does connect well with your kid, the leader will be aware of it as well. And they'll kind of start pursuing that or hunting it down. If they're yeah. good at what they're doing, they'll mm-hmm. kind of start hunting it down. And one of the things that I realized that my parents were really good at was just not being like uh a suspicious of those leaders but then also um going out of their way when those leaders said hey could could i take jackson to coffee just to hang out and it's like we're busy but we'll cancel that thing so that you guys can do that because it was such a high value i mean i remember debbie asking to take Aaliyah to ice cream I like remember that. I remember eating and I, lots of ice cream with Aaliyah when she was little. Yeah. I knew someday she was going to come work I for was me. like, that could have still not get been, a lot of ice cream together. It could have not been an investment personally, but purely professionally from the jump. From I don't she know. Was like in third grade, yeah. you know. But like, I remember those things and I remember because it's not just something that my parents talked about, but be, it, because it was a true value. Yeah. It was like, man, we'll cancel plans to try to make this work because that's how, that's how important it is that, there's these outside influences leaning in talking these things over with our kids because at the end of the day when something blows up in your kid's life if they hear the same response not just from you but they have these reliable built-in relationships and they continue to be reinforced in the same way to posture themselves in a way that's God honoring that's so influential versus if they only hear it from their parents and then everybody else at school, at sports, right. in their different hobbies yeah. is giving them other advice. Well, now you're kind of pitted against the other advice that their kids are, that yeah. other kids are giving them, other teachers, whatever. Yeah. So it's like, man, to have that built in knowing, hey, we're going to, we're going to point them back towards Christ in how yeah. we respond. But then also there's these other influencers that are going to do the same thing. That's huge. And we take that, I mean, like, I think even from a strategy standpoint in kids and in students, I know this is something that we both do very intentionally is we're going to put multiple kids in every group. I mean, multiple leaders in every group with kids Yeah. for a number of reasons, right? Safety, obviously. But beyond that is like, if I'm your small group leader and you just, we just don't connect really well. Yeah. It's going to be a long year and you're probably not going to keep coming. Yeah. So if I have a co-leader with me, the chance is that now there's, twice as many yeah. chances that you're going to connect to one of us. And in some of our student groups... In human nature, I'm just going to pick one of you because yeah, right? one of you is going to be doofier than the other right. one of me. <laughs> I'm true. just going to pick totally one. That's totally true. Yeah. And in some of our small groups, we've got three, four adults investing, depending on the size of the group. Man, it's pretty hard. If your kids are not connecting with somebody, yeah. it, you know, like, and we're running at them pretty good. Um, like we're really going out of our way to make sure that there's people there. And that starts from the time that you're in kids yeah. ministry all the way through. And we, you know, since coming back from the pandemic, we have 
watched our numbers, you know, rise and rise in kids ministry. And we're thankful to have a lot of kids, but we definitely, our desire isn't just that we're keeping your kids safe. Like we want them to be safe, but we, relationships is a high priority. And that takes, you know, a, a lot, a lot of leaders that are there to invest in kids. And so I know, you know, people joke a lot that I'm always asking for volunteers and it's not because I want a bigger team. I would love a big team. I want a really big team. But the purpose behind that is, you know, I want every kid to be known by somebody when they yeah. show up and not just, okay, I'm able to keep you safe and do an activity with you, but this leader knows my name. I'm connecting with this leader. They're going to notice, you know, when I come in with that birthday symbol on, they're going to know since my birthday, they're going to be able to tell if I'm having an off day that something's going on. Yeah. And so that really, you know, that that kind of care is what we're what we're going for you know because kids won't we we want to lay that biblical foundation we want to teach your kids when they're coming on a weekend for sure but we we know we have a limited amount of time to do that but your kids will remember how their leader made them feel mm, when yeah. they when they came to church yep, more yeah. than they will the lessons that we're teaching them and so um that's why it is so important that we have you know enough leaders to be able to to make those connects with kids and, and be be that influence, yeah. that partner to a parent. Yeah, so. that's huge. Well, as we land the plane here yeah. real quick for some parents, what are some uh, resources available to parents between kids and students ministry that you guys can yeah. really come along, yeah, build that ally? Yeah. Kids. Okay, so, um, so yeah, we uh, send stuff home each week. And we also, if your kids come to church, you're getting to get an email into your inbox with some practical, this is what your kids learned and how to connect with them on those. And so, you know, being a mom of kids that are in those younger years, I have a seven month old to an 11 year old, make that time to use those resources. You know, if you can help your kids do a daily where they're reading their Bible and interacting with those pages, you know, that's that's a good thing. Um, or if it's just, you know what, we're gonna set aside one night a week mm -hmm. that we're gonna talk through what did you experience at church this weekend and ask not just you know what did you learn but actually dive into some deeper questions that are gonna encourage that that conversation set aside that one night or that you know one morning and you can even log onto our website and actually watch our for elementary up through fourth grade we have a, a bible story video that's always available there that you can watch that you can know what were your kids yeah. taught this weekend read through that passage and um, so just engage with them that, so they will see value. They will see value in God's word. And um, so, yeah, so those are our biggest things. We send home a memory verse card. We send home a little card that has a few questions that you can even leave in your car and talk to them, you know, when you guys are running errands. Um, and then we send home a personal take home sheet for them that they can engage with. Yeah. And some of our sites, you can even bring that back and get points that go towards a party. Oh, so that's awesome. Every site has a few like unique ways of how they how they handle those. But I know if you bring that paper back to show your leader that you did it, they are going to celebrate with you no matter what campus you're at. Yeah, that's awesome. So. Yeah. I yeah, think. not just papers to throw away. When no, you utilize pick them. your kid up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. bring them, bring them back and memorize that verse. It's one verse a month. Yeah, that you know maybe you're like, which verses are important for my kids to memorize? Well, we're telling you, here's one that you can focus on as a family a month. We write ours on a um, on a whiteboard in our kitchen. Oh yeah, and so the kids are seeing it every day when they're coming out. You know, that's by their vitamin drawer. Take their vitamins or seeing that yeah. that verse of the month or put it in the bathroom on the mirror. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we've got our, obviously our monthly email that goes out to parents, which we try to put kind of what's coming up, what are we teaching, what's the teaching series that's going on. We're always recommending a resource in there um, for them. Sometimes it's a maybe it's an app that's really helpful for parents. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just kind of a culture thing to try to get them uh, kind of up to speed on, or or it's questions to talk through and think through. Or, different things that's each month we're trying to resource them there obviously presence is a huge thing so i always tell parents you're always welcome to come and sit in and hang out in, in a student thing um, although i will tell you most of the time they end up serving with us so um, see how much fun it is hang out for a little while like yeah. this ain't so bad i'll hang out with somebody else's kids yeah uh but you know i think that's a big deal we've we obviously have some some especially our global events we really try to to make it a big deal for parents so we Kind of take the balcony and make it the parent lounge. Think like box suites at a yeah at a game or something like that. So really trying to lean in, invest there, um, and then and then we said it this weekend. I think especially once you hit junior high, high school, those teenage years, 
man, just worship with your kid, like model with your kid, and 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 then you you naturally have things to talk about. Yeah. Um, because they're experience. and they're going to have, I remember early on, uh, we, when we initially shifted some of that programming and I remember I was telling somebody this week, I remember, um, the kids in the service, the junior high kid is in the service and, uh, we were passing an offering bucket, you know, and it goes by and the kid says to the mom, we don't give, you know, <laughs> why, why don't we tithe? Yeah. And, uh, the mom's like, no, 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 we give online. Okay. Yeah. We give online. But like, and, and it's, it's a, really funny story but the reality is that's a conversation that doesn't happen yeah like that kid would totally be unaware yeah. actually you're right you know that they that their parent is <laughs> yeah. giving online especially when you do it online yeah. and yeah. so there's nothing wrong with giving online right. but man to be able to have that conversation yeah. explain that Not like the car rides are your friends in the yeah. teenage years you're going to spend a ton of time in the car don't just pick your kid up how you know ask him how things went reach out your small group leaders are always available for you as well um, you know, just if, if there's things you're going through, things that we, we want to be that resource for you. Yeah. Don't wait until everything's blowing up. Yeah. yeah. Like, let us know on the front end um, so that we can come alongside and encourage. You know, throughout the years, throughout the year, some of the growth opportunities that we offer as a church is targeting parents in different stages and ages. Uh, the parenting conference you already mentioned is going to be an amazing resource for parents, regardless of where you are in the scope of parenting, the season of parenting, um, whether you're, you know, kind of crushing it right now or you're still trying to figure it out. We've got stuff even for, for families that are or maybe a blended family where you've trying got to navigate trying to navigate, you know, stepkids and, you know, what all that looks like or parents who aren't believers that are, you know, maybe you're in a situation where you're, um, you kind of marriage is split. It's, they're splitting time with the kid and they're not a believer. Like, how do you navigate that? Or... You know, how do you like this? So there's so many things coming out of that conference. Yeah. And I don't want to give away too many of the resources because, but we're, we're literally giving so many resources at that, yeah. at that conference. It's a great event. spot to start there. Yeah. It's a great spot. And I agree. One of the things that's true between what both of you are saying is like, it's good to know what's going on in kids programming, in yeah. students programming. It's nice to know learn the flow of how the program goes what what is the you know passage or the theme that we're in or the book that we're in yeah. or the sermon series for students what's the topic that we're talking about if you know some of that stuff it helps you ask more informed questions to your kid about yeah. and how was small group tonight and what game did you guys play or you know those kinds of things if you know some of the flow it helps the conversation yeah. And um, man, excited for this parenting conference yeah. coming up because I think that's going to be a, a huge connecting point maybe for some families that aren't really, we're not able to operate in that partnership right now, but that partnership's going to grow there. Yeah. So that's going to be good. Don't forget, text family to 64567 if you're wanting to opt in to uh, sign up for that parenting conference. But that's all we got for this week here on Tangible Takeaways. Thanks for being with us. Uh, we'll catch you guys next week.